famous art light center at the dome, which is being a portrait of a lady on my fire. Once again, my name is Scott Hans, and I'm the host of Collider Videos for your consideration in our weekly series covering the uh, award season, which is kind of a crazy time. But uh, we are partnered this season with our friends here at Art Light Cinemas, and we've been doing these Collider FYC screenings, and they've been just fantastic, as you can see by the sold out crowd here at the Royal Higgins Art Light Cinema. I have a dome, I mean, this is like the place to see a movie like this. And I want to bring to the stage right now uh, for this film, which has been nominated for Best Foreign Film by the Golden Globes, Critics' Choice, and the Independent Spirit Awards. Please welcome to the stage actress Adele Hanel. <laughs> well, uh, when I um, when I first read the screenplay, this is a great script, and then I was right because it was the best screenplay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I was saying uh, something that I know my term, my collaboration, and relationship. So obviously, this is very much. Yes. 
something that I have the passion to say at all. And, and this power of this love story also was holding me like so much alive with this screenplay when I did the script. All the details, it was like a huge promise. And I was so excited when I first read it. And when I first uh, uh, get the, when I approached this Maya, uh, I thought she was so alive already. She was so there. a love story that's told step by step. It is a slow build, like you're falling in love with him while we are falling in love with him. So what was the challenge to really capture that heart and that authenticity, realness of it? Well, it's um, it's believing in the fact that you have to be patient, um, believing in the day, believing in the tools of cinema, Believing also um, in the place and the fact that you will you will speak that language and, and, and live that rhythm, um, and it's um, it's it's also sticking to the program radically on you know, each step because I wrote this very patient uh, slow burn story and rise of desire, but then when you shoot it, you you also have to be patient. You have to resist. The strong chemistry that was there, uh, you have to, like for instance, I knew that they wouldn't smile at each other before an hour and 20 minutes. <laughs> and you have to resist the fact that you, you know, try to make them smile before. And everybody's kind of telling you, oh, they're kind of moody, they could smile at each other. <laughs> and it's about, no. You could use it in the editing room, but yeah, but and, no. <laughs> so it's mostly about resisting, and I think you know, um, it's it's how we feel when we fall in love. Mm -hmm. We patiently uh, hope that it's mutual. We, we we it's building patiently, but inside we are so impatient. <laughs> you know, the the have a story like this, and you know, the chemistry is so important. Without the chemistry. You, you don't have a film, especially a love story. So what was it like the first time the two of you met? And what did you what did you realize that you were you had you had it, you know, that you had that answer? Uh, do you want to just Uh, the same as we did all the collaboration together. 
technique and the gesture and the rhythm of the, the painter uh, between the model and the canvas and you know what's this step fast, this is two steps toward the canvas, this can dance with the painter. So that's all I'm gonna tell you about my academic year. So after I saw the film there, I was still online, I was doing some research about film. And <coughs> it was just a press conference at Cannes. And you mentioned that this is a love story with the plot. And that really like kind of got to me. What, what did you mean by that? I would elaborate on that because it's such a beautiful description to me. Well, um, yeah, the, the movie is trying to depart globally from the narrative of conflict uh, and um, the dramaturgy of conflict, um, and and wanted to, as it's a story between love story between two women, and that is something that that wouldn't have happened if it was a woman and a man. There is no gender domination, uh, but there is also we decided not to put any intellectual domination even though it's a relationship between also a model and an artist, and, you know, usually we call it this with the kind of power dynamic. Um, and we also decided, I mean, I, because I wrote it by myself, decided not to uh, also push the buttons of a social hierarchy. Um, so we have a love dialogue and a creative dialogue that doesn't rely on the dynamic uh, of the, on the usual power dynamic that we used to, which is the dynamic of conflict. Um, it's also the case for the erotic scenes, they are not uh, based on the eroticism, on the eroticism of conflict. Um, what happens when you do that? I mean, it's politically new, so it's new imaginary, so it's interesting, but also new, it brings new tension in the room, um, new emotional journey for you because it follows a price. That's why it lies in equality in fiction, and I think also in life, is that it's full of surprise. You don't know what to expect. Because usually we used to see films where um, the scenes are about bargaining. It's a good bargain. That's how we're told to fight scenes. You know, somebody wants something, the other one wants something else, and in the end, you will end up, you know, you will end up defending the thing. Um, so, yeah, that's what equality is. Uh, you can talk about the philosophy to arrive. Like your strength, you know, like any kind of love story, whatever, you know, marathon, uh, uh, regardless of gender, you know, what else you do, you know, it's a very full passion, and if you don't have it, and you're, you're so poorly in that, where it just, you don't lie, but this was very intimate and authentic, and again, I mean, it was erotic, it was a tremendous amount of restraint to the intimacy, and, you know, what was it like to fulfill? To really capture the intimacy between the two of you, to really feel it. Oh, the sex scene. 
The whole um, all the exteriors are shot in Brittany. Um, uh, it was a late day shooting. It was the first week of shooting, and then the castle um, is set as. I mean, all my, all my film has, has, has shooting the Parisian periphery, Parisian banlieue, um, and the castle is yeah, 50 kilometers from Paris. And it's, um, we've been hunting for castle, and mostly you visit places where people get married, or places where people have shot already a lot of uh, period pieces, and there's like, yeah, I mean, it's, I think it's kind of fake, but we found this. There's a city hall in this very, very uh, small town, um, and part of the castle was the city hall, and there was a whole part that was untouched for, I mean, I think 150 years. So basically, you walk in this place, and there was this blue color on the wall that was just perfect. And that's the paradox, because um, my film, my previous film, there were all kinds of studio. But it never was a call for. Uh, it was teenage, teenage girls' room, but there was a lot of intervention. And it's actually, it's a period piece, but it's actually my film where, where there was less intervention on this, regarding this design. What makes some great actors direct? Uh, I wanted to put you 
in the same state of mind to sh for you to share the frustration that beauty is so inaccessible. Finding a book, you gotta read it three times. Um, and once you will hear music, you have to go to church, which explains the success of religion. I don't know if I can make that joke here. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> um, and um, yeah, once more, it's a matter of being equal, sharing the experience of these characters, um, and also absolutely believing in the power of music in cinema. Uh, and that is that when it happens in the film, you definitely uh, connect with this idea. Um, and um, yeah. Yeah, so, so riveting as well as you could just totally get consumed and grow by the film. Like, what kind of, a, of an impact do you hope this movie makes? Like, how do you hope it changes the dynamic with the way you portray an immigrant? Well, I, I hope it has an impact. Uh, I mean, I, I hope you feel seen. I mean, the, the movie is all about uh, the power of the gaze, um, the fact that, um, I mean, you look at the film, but the film is also looking at you. I hope that you feel looked at by the film. And, and in the end, I want you to leave the room thinking about yourself and also your love for cinema, because that's what this kind of thing is all about. You know, you, at first you are, um, you are like Maria, you, are, you, you think about Maria and watching Eloise, but at some point you are in a theater seat, Adele is in a theater seat, and you're not watching Eloise, you're watching Adele and Adele performing, you're watching an actress, uh, you're watching cinema, it's cinema and learning itself, so that suddenly there is room for you, there is room for your own love stories, for your own um, uh, souvenir, uh, remembrance. Um, and um, so, yeah, I want you to leave the room full of this story, but also full of your story.
you got it. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, just a couple of uh, requests. One is, can you please stay seated while, while we're both in exit? The second request is the movie opens, movie opens nationwide on February 14th. So, so please, you know, fight this right to her. And please come and so, when you see a film like this, you love a film like this. You know, we want to spread the word, so how do you do that, right? So she <laughs> yeah. you know, so go, go on Twitter, go on, on Instagram, go on, go on, go on Facebook, you went with that, you're still using MySpace. So once again, ladies and gentlemen, of course, you're the lady on the fire. Thank you. Woo! <laughs>